Welcome back to Inti Center, everybody, and a whip around Fiduce. And we start this week with two extra inning games, one that was almost an extra inning game, and a can of whoop ass. First to Greece, where the Baby Yodas were hosting the Stone Temple Seattle Pilots. And it would look great for the Pilots early, as a George Brett two-run homer in the first put them up early. They stretched the lead to five, nothing at the top of the third, but the Baby Yodas would score a pair in the third, three more in the seventh, and we'd be off to extras. We'd have to get all the way to the 11th, but Yui from the boys singled with one out. He moved a second on a balk to third on a wild pitch, and then he scores on a sack fly to give the win to the Baby Yodas. Then we go to Columbia, where the family Madrigal hosted Let's Play 2. Madrigal, they jump out to a 2 nothing lead, but a Miguel Cabrera three-run homer that highlights a four-run fourth for Let's Play 2. But a pinch hit RBI double in the eighth from Jose, 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 Jose. The GOAT, Jose Ramirez, ties the game at five. We'd need 10 innings to decide this one. It was a Jack Glasscock one-out double, a Bob Carruthers infield single, and a walk-off single from Billy Hamilton, the dead one, as the Family Madrigal takes it six to five. Now off to Queens, where a five-run fifth with a two-run double from Ichiro and a three-run homer from Johnny Bench put Siorak up six to two. The Steel Tiger Cranes would lead seven to five to the top of the eighth, but the Enhancers would get five of their own in the bottom of the eighth. Barry Bonds hit a two-run homer. Larry Walker makes it back-to-back -back jacks, and then Hack Wilson hits a two-run homer of his own. That puts the enhancers up 10 to 7, but it wasn't over yet. Ralph Kiner hits a two run homer off Zach Britton in the ninth, but Britton retired the next three batters Barry Larkin, Buddy Bell, and Ricky Henderson to end it in squeaky bum time, a 10 to 9 winner for the enhancers. Then we go to Fairbanks, where Leon Day had a bad day and Smokey Joe Williams might have had an even worse one. Day lasted just two and two-thirds innings. He gives up six runs on eight hits. Williams relieved and lasted three and two-thirds innings, giving up seven runs on eight hits. Roger Hornsby had four hits and four RBI. Reggie Smith, three hits and five RBI. Al Spaulding tosses a complete game, and the Orange Barrels open a complete can of whoop-ass on Game of Throws. They win it 18-2. to two. Second day of games this week, we get another tight game from the Pilots and the Yodas. You Daly tossed seven strong innings. He gave up two runs while he scattered nine hits. Wasn't quite enough. Jake Arietta tosses eight innings of one-run, six-hit baseball. RBI singles from Jesse Burkett and Byron Buxton. Trump won from George Brett. The Yodas take that one two to one. Let's play two in the Family Madrigal. They also gave us a second close one. Jack Glasscock put the home side up 1-0 in the fourth with an RBI single. And Yogi Berra reached on an error in the seventh by George Gore. Scoring Hank Aaron's high at one, but Madrigal gets three in the eighth. An RBI single from John Riley. And RBI singles from Paul Hines and Elston Howard. They put the Fenley Madrigal back on top. And Al Orth gets his first save of the season. Madrigal gets a 4-1 to one win. Heels, he just can't catch a break. Max Scherzer goes six innings. He gives up three runs on six hits, and Sean Doolittle tosses a couple of scoreless innings in relief. It's not enough against Tom Terrific. Tom Seaver gives up one run in the complete game. Six hits, strikes out seven. Amazing. Take that one in a nail biter. Carl Yastrzemski had an RBI double, and Ken Griffey Jr. had an RBI double. Both of those coming in the first inning, and it was goose eggs the rest of the way for the Demon Bags on June 3rd. But that was enough as an RBI ground out from Robinson Cano in the fourth was the only run allowed by Johan Santana. He allowed just one hit. That's not right. One run and some number of hits I didn't capture right. Eh, whatever. Kurt Schilling had a 1-2-3-9. The Demon Bags take the win over the Gales of November 2-1. Orange Barrel scored 29 runs in their three-game set against Game of Throws. 
They win the finale nine to three to take two out of three in the series. Rico Petroselli and John Beckwith each with a pair of RBIs in that nine to three win. After a day off, we pick up with some baseball and we get a whole a ho hum performance from old Hoss Radburn. He scatters eleven hits, gives up two runs. The barrel got to find better clutch heading than that. Willie McCovey, Scott Rowland, Eddie Collins, they each homered. The enhancers whack the barrels 11 to 2. Down 7 to 2. A shack of their own get within 9 to 7 late. They had Noodles Han batting with two on and two out in the ninth, but Han grounded out to short. A game of throws holds on to win 9 to 7, thanks in large part to a three RBI day from Robbie Alomar. Bullet Rogan went eight innings, gave up two runs, both in the first on five hits. Duke Snyder walks it off with a sack fly. Gale of November, they win that one three to two. Bob Feller and Hilton Smith gave us the patented, they both deserve better than no decisions game. But each got one of those no decisions. Amazings took on Sithy. Smith only went five innings, but he only gave up one run on seven hits. Feller goes nine, also gives up one run on six hits. We're tied after those nine innings, and we go to extra innings. In fact, we're tied at nine going into the 11th inning. That's when Harmon Killebrew singled and Stan Musial scores the go-ahead run on a throwing error from Bryce Harper. That puts Sithy up two to one. Bryce Harper would get two quick outs in the bottom of the inning, but a Ty Cobb double gave Amazing's life, and a two-run homer from Joey Votto walks it off. Amazing stun Sithy. They take that one three to two. Hey, uh, somebody called Jason Stark. We got to find out just how often a team has a nine run inning and loses the game. I'm not sure how often it happens. I don't even know if it's ever happened before, but it happened to who else? The bandwagoners. They scored nine runs in the fourth, highlighted by a grand slam from Oscar Charleston. They take a 9-3 to three lead, but those were the only runs they'd score in the game, and 9 was not enough. A 6-run 7th featuring a 3-run blast from George Gore. That dooms them. Madrigal will take this one 12-9. There was one team, though, that didn't waste a 9-run inning, and that was the Seorak Steel Tiger Cranes. And Eddie Matthews' Grand Slam highlighted their 9-inning it was a rare bad outing from Jacob DeGrom, who got torched for eight runs, only four earned on seven hits in just four and a third innings. Siorak takes it 12 to eight. Sandy Koufax was a wizard, scattering 10 hits over eight innings, only giving up two runs. And homers from Yaz and Griffey, so the Demon Bags top Greg Maddox, and let's play two, four to two. All right, I had to pause. I had to take a phone call. Hopefully, I pick up in the right spot. Did I tell you about Sandy Koufax? He was a wizard. He scattered 10 hits over eight innings, only gave up two runs. Homers from Yaz and Griffey, so the Demon Bags, top Greg Maddox, and let's play two, four to two. And oh my God, why does out of the park hate heels so much? Oscar Charleston hit a dramatic two out, two run homer in the bottom of the ninth to tie the game at three. But Sam Crawford led off the 10th of the solo homer. The Madrigal score two more, and they take the game and sweep the series with a 6-3 to three win in 10 innings. Like, seriously, Heels, did, did you, like, sleep with a programmer out of the park's girlfriend or something? I mean, what did you do to piss this Sim off? Hey, Northern Shore's got a taste of some similar heartbreak. In their series finale against the Baby Yodas, Ron Santos singled with one out to tie the game at four before Robinson Cano hit into a double play to end the inning. In the ninth, Mickey Cochrane got a two-out, pinch-hit RBI single to put the Baby Yodas back on top. And Louis Tian struck out a pair and a one, two, three, ninth to close it out for Mandalore. And we'll end with extra innings in Seattle. Denny McLean had what was perhaps the first dominant start in franchise history for Siorak. As he goes nine innings, he gives up two runs on six hits. Zach Granke matches him with nine innings, two runs on seven hits, and we go to extras. 
Chuck Klein sparks it for Stone Temple Seattle Pilots. He gets a two-out single. He moves to second on a wild pitch. And a double from Yadier Molina brings him home and brings down the roof of the kingdom, hopefully, not literally, to walk it off and give Stone Temple Seattle Pilots a 3-2 to two win in 11 innings. That's going to do it for any center. Hopefully, uh, the recordings didn't get screwed up too bad, and it's just one recording. If not, I, I don't know. And Hopefully, heals your, your karma flips in the game, and you go off on this like 80-game winning streak at some point to shock the world. I believe in you, buddy. I also believe in, in Santa Claus for way longer than I should have. So take that as you will, Heels. We'll see you next time on Inky Center.